Friends, it is Tanya, Thrifty Treasures, and today I am super excited to be introducing you guys to Karen Lebo. Karen is known as Digging with Dirty Girl on YouTube, so let's meet her now. Hello, everybody. I am Karen Lebo, and uh, my channel on YouTube is Karen Lebo, but my show is called Digging with Dirty Girl. And the reason I called it that is because I started out doing metal detecting videos where I was digging in the dirt and I thought that was kind of funny. Um, but then I started doing haul videos and I haven't done a metal detecting video in years. So anyway, that's where that came from. But I figure I'm still, you know, digging for treasures, so it makes sense. Um, my, I am a reseller, but I sell almost strictly vintage and almost everything on Etsy. I do sell a few things on eBay when um, when I'm not sure of the value of something and I want to see if maybe an auction it'll shoot up, which occasionally happens. Or I have something that's not vintage, which I don't go out looking for things that aren't vintage, but sometimes they find me. And so what I wanted to do with uh, this introductory video, which Tanya has been kind enough to host. Thank you, Tanya. Um, I wanted to show you some of my favorite things to sell on Etsy and why I like to sell them and why you might um, be overlooking them or you might just give them a second look at a garage sale or wherever you do your sourcing. So with that, I am going to screen share. Okay, so uh, this is what my shop looks like on Etsy. It's called Vintage Dazzle. And there's some of my stuff. I sell about half jewelry and half other things. I uh, love jewelry because it's so easy to ship and fun to photograph. And so I'll show you what kinds of jewelry I like best. And the first thing is Native American sterling silver jewelry, sometimes copper, but mostly sterling silver and turquoise. Uh, really does very, very well for me. And since I live in the Southwest, I live in California, so I find a lot of it also. Uh, second favorite is Mexican silver jewelry. Um, ounce for ounce doesn't sell quite as high as the Native American, but um, there are a lot of collectors out there and there's a lot of really beautiful Mexican silver. This is a sterling silver and lapis lazuli bracelet. And then, oh, sorry about the traffic. I live on a very busy street. Uh, I This is a um, mid-century rhinestones and mid-century jewelry in general I just absolutely love. And uh, so especially if it's signed by a designer. This is Eisenberg. Just love the opulent look of those brooches. Uh, and then other sterling silver, like this uh, David Anderson Norwegian um, brooch with enamel. The uh, Scandinavian jewelry sells really well. And then this is uh, an Art Deco piece. I love Art Deco, Art Nouveau, jewelry the older the better it's a little harder to find art deco i find pretty often but art nouveau and victorian not quite as much here's a victorian brooch with a purple glass stone okay the second category of things that i really love to sell is art glass and a lot of people shy away from selling art glass because of the difficulty of shipping it but I actually find that it's not that hard to ship. You just got to keep yourself supplied in big bubble wrap, the kind with the big bubbles, and uh, good sturdy boxes, and just don't scrimp on it. Just use as much as you need. And I very, very, very rarely have anything break when I uh, ship it. And I love especially paperweights. And then this is a vase, an art glass vase with the irises on it. It's not a super old piece, I think maybe from the uh, 80s, but just a neat looking piece. 
Another category that I enjoy selling, and this has been fairly recently that I started doing more of this, is original art or um, good quality prints like antique lith uh, lithographs or etchings, things like that. This is um, an original pastel from the 1800s in a really cool frame. Um, it's I find a lot of art at the free, flea market for really cheap. People are wanting to get rid of it because they're tired of storing it, they're tired of moving it. Uh, a lot of people, again, it's a little difficult to ship, so a lot of online sellers shy away from it. So um, you can often get a really good profit margin on them. Um, I bought a painting at the flea market for $20 and sold it for $300 not too long ago, so... Um, that doesn't happen real often, but it does sometimes. Uh, I love anything mid-century modern. It it does tend to sell pretty well. Um, this is a set of lead crystal napkin rings. And also anything uh, that has an atomic look to it, like a Sputnik satellite pattern or something that looks like Saturn or something that just reminds you of the space age or space travel. Uh, anything from jewelry to art to toys to dishes to anything that has that sort of theme on it seems to do really well for me. And then I love to sell primitives, wood carvings, outsider art. Uh, this happens to be a Guatemalan carving, a little angel. Um, but the, uh, you know, old spoons, any old kitchenware. Um, let's see, this is a, a cookie press. Um, and also the cast iron primitives. This is a coffee bean roaster, which that's not really a very good picture, is it? <laughs> and then I love to sell the little trinket boxes, um, especially the Limoges boxes. I don't think I have any in my store right now because they've all sold, but this is a bohemian porcelain box that has the same sort of look as a Limoges box with this Brass trim, a little decorative latch. This one does not happen to be hand-painted, which, you know, the price reflects that. It, you can't get a real high price for the transfer-printed ones, but it's still very pretty. They make nice gifts, um, so they always sell well. I always have a bunch of them in stock. And this is another kind of trinket box. This is a paper mache and lacquer, a hand-painted box from Japan. And uh, those seem to sell pretty well for me, too. And a third kind of box is a silver plate. Of course, if you can find a sterling box, that's even better. But this is a little silver plate box. And a staple for me for years has been silk scarves. They don't necessarily sell for a whole lot, but they're easy to find. Uh, I hardly ever walk into a thrift store that I don't come out with a scarf. Um, Vera Newman's are a, a good designer, um, Schiaparelli, Schiaparelli, however you say that, um, uh, what other other kinds, um, Adrian Vittadini is another designer that I like, Any, but anything that's signed and silk and pretty colors, they make nice pictures, they're easy to ship, uh, sell anywhere from $15 and upwards, and so um, that's it for the the major categories of things that I sell. I sell a lot of just about anything that I find that I really like, so which makes it fun to shop because I just buy what I like and I hope that somebody else will like it too. I source mostly at flea markets and uh, sometimes at garage sales, sometimes at thrift stores, but one of my major uh, sources are my friends and relatives. I happen to be extremely lucky in that I have some in-laws who are very interested and knowledgeable in vintage and antiques. They all love to shop. Some of them have been in the reselling business before, uh, but they aren't any longer. They just still love to shop, and uh, they know what I like, and so they buy stuff for me and just a lot of times just give it to me. So I'm really lucky <laughs> that every once in a while I get a care package from a relative that's just chock full of fun stuff. Um, and uh, I have, you know, I always tell my friends, you know, if you're doing a garage clean out or an attic clean out and you want me to just come take stuff away, I will. And sometimes they'll just say, hey, I got some boxes, come get it. And I come get it and I sort through it and I 
pick out what I want to sell and donate the rest. Um, so, you know, you, you never know who's going to just want to give you stuff for free. <laughs> oh, and I, I find stuff at the curbs too. I'm always, <laughs> I'm always looking to see what people are throwing out. Um, I find a lot of good stuff that way. Uh, so that is it. That is about all I have to tell you. Thanks again to Tanya for having me. I enjoyed making this video. I hope you'll come pay me a visit at vintagedazzle.etsy.com or on my YouTube channel, which is Karen Lebo. And uh, if you have any questions, I would be more than happy to try to answer them. So thanks. Bye. That was some awesome sales you had there, Karen. Thank you so much for coming on and introducing yourself to everybody and sharing some of your sales with us. And I wanted to let you guys know if you really enjoy selling the jewelry um, and, and or collecting it, Karen Lebo is definitely one to be following. Um, she is very knowledgeable in that department. She's taught me a whole lot about jewelry and I really enjoy uh, watching her videos. They're very informative. So it is, it is my hope that you guys will all go over and subscribe to Karen. And we will see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.